Hello, good evening and welcome. I'm Kieran Lovejoy, aka Britain Circuses. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, freedom of speech, uh, specifically uh, two articles uh, on the internet, um, one of which uh, concerns, the uh, first one, concerns uh, an award being given to uh, Charlie Hebdo. The French satirical magazine, which if you recall, was um, assaulted by a group of Muslim um, terrorists and had many of its members murdered by them. Um, after they uh, posted uh, images and articles uh, concerning uh, the Prophet Muhammad, um, which Muslims apparently found offensive um, because they're fucking idiots and they're completely irrational and they believe in things that are demonstrably false. Um, Salman Rushdie, uh, a popular author uh, who had a fatwa uh, issued against him after he published uh, his book, uh, The Satanic Verses, um, and was um, threatened again and again by uh, Muslims, um, has <laughs> called a number of uh, authors pussies because um, they're, they're boycotting the award being given to Charlie Hebdo. Um, which I'm going to hop into the, uh, the article now. Uh, Salman Rushdie, the authors boycotting event awarding Charlie Hebdo a prize for free speech are pussies. Salman Rushdie has accused fellow authors, including Peter Carey and Michael Ondaatje, of being pussies for boycotting an event organised by the free speech organisation PEN, at which the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo is to be given an award. Um, obviously, th this the idea of the award is to um, uh, reward someone <laughs> for encouraging or, or, sh or showing or utilising free speech and um, for being someone worthy of commendation in this regard. Uh, as it comes to um, uh, Charlie Abdo, this would be them not only standing against uh, tyrannical extremists who want to censor free speech, but also to even after being attacked and having several of their members killed, continuing to post these same things, continuing to say, no, we will not be silenced, we will not have our creativity stifled by censors, we will not give in to tyrannical extremists. So they do deserve it. There are people who claim that um, they shouldn't have freedom of speech. People think, well, it's, it's wrong because you can't be offensive. The political correctness idea that if someone somewhere finds something offensive, that makes it wrong and you should stop, which is utter bullshit and is one of the, the many, many attacks on freedom that are currently occurring, mostly in the Western world, because, of course, these battles have already been fought and lost in the Middle East and in some areas of the Far East. Freedom of speech is very, very important. And this is an excellent example of someone saying, these people support free speech, they deserve to be rewarded, we're going to give them an award. Perfectly reasonable, people do that all the time, it's fine. And then people saying, no, they don't deserve an award. Again, fine. But their reasoning seems to be that if you reward Charlie Hebdo, a satirical magazine, for promoting free speech, for utilising free speech, for standing up for free speech, then what you're doing is, by proxy, uh, saying you agree with their content. Which I don't believe is the case, but even if it were, this would not in any way be an issue for me. I mean, I've never looked at <laughs> Charlie Hebdo, I've never read it. I've only ever seen covers of it. But it doesn't in any way seem problematic to me. It's fucking satire. Who gives a fuck what it says? Apparently these people do. The Booker Prize winner Carrie, the English patient, author on Datje, and at least four other writers will withdraw from the Penn American Center Gala in New York next week in protest at the decision to give the Freedom of Expression Courage Award to the magazine. Carrie joined in opposition to the award by Francine Prose, Teju Cole, Rachel Kushner, and Thais Selassie. I've heard of literally none of these other than Salman Rushdie, and he's in favour of it. 
questioned whether the January attack on the magazine's Paris office, in which 12 staff were killed, was a freedom of speech issue for the human rights organisation to be self-righteous about. Yes. Yes, it was a freedom of speech issue. What happened was, people said, we don't think you should have the right to express yourselves as you wish. Then, people who were told that said, fuck you, we're going to express ourselves however the fuck we want because we need freedom of speech, it's fucking important. Then they were killed for it. Then they continued to say, ha ha, fuck off, we're still going to do it. If that is not about free speech, I have no idea what the fuck you think is. I... Freedom of speech is ridiculously important. All they were doing was expressing themselves artistically, and someone said, we will kill you if you don't stop. If you don't cr create things that we find okay, if you don't cater to our every whim, we will murder you. If you do not censor yourself, if you do not stop talking about what we don't want you to talk about, we will kill you. That is what they were saying. And then they did. How can that be anything other than freedom of speech? That is quite literally a freedom of speech issue. There is no way that could be possibly even remotely misinterpreted as something that wasn't a free speech issue. And actually you're a fucking moron. Anyway. And it's not just... Who gives a fuck if they feel self-righteous? It shouldn't matter what they feel like. Who gives a fuck about their feelings? It's not relevant. They believe these people deserve an award for what they did. It seems to fit, so that's fine. You, you, fine. Say, I don't think we should do that. That's okay. But I'm going to call you a fucking idiot. He added, all this is complicated by Penn's seeming blindness to the cultural arrogance of the French nation, which does not recognize its moral obligation to a large and disempowered segment of their population. I'm guessing this would be Muslims. <laughs> that they're, this, whoever the fuck, is suggesting that in order to um, award Charlie Hebdo with this award, what they're doing is legitimizing potential fun making at a religion and that this is in some way wrong because Muslims in France um, are, are disempowered uh, and that French people as a whole, as a race are culturally arrogant that sounds particularly culturally arrogant of you. Very racist as well, as it happens. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I do not recognize that um, the Muslim population of France is um, disempowered or that French people as a whole are culturally arrogant and uh, that, French, that, <laughs> sorry, that uh, French Muslims are in need of uh, protecting, of defending, and of um, uh, of having laws written specifically to curtail freedom of speech to protect their feelings. This is not my belief. My belief is, if you want to say something, say it. You want to make some art? Make it. I don't care what it is. You can draw pictures of decapitated babies if you want. Or you can, I don't know, paint the fucking Sistine Chapel. It's not going to bother me. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you do. It's fucking art. Who cares? You want to write something that might offend someone? Good. Go do it. But write something now that's offensive. This is why Draw Muhammad Day is so important. When people say, I don't like what you're doing, that's fine. They're allowed to say that. They should always be allowed to say that. In fact, I encourage people to say, I don't like what you're doing. If you don't like something, fucking tell someone you don't like it. Tell the person who's involved. Say, I don't like it, here's why. But don't you dare say, I don't like it 
therefore you should change it, and if you don't, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Cause I'm not gonna be okay with that. Back to the article. However, Salman Rushdie, a former Penn president who lived in hiding for years after a fatwa in response to his novel The Satanic Verses, was highly critical of the authors who withdrew in protest. Oops, sorry, this, this, it's really badly worded. Uh, was highly critical of the authors who withdrew in protest at the magazine's cartoons, which offended many Muslims. Who cares? The award will be given. Penn is holding firm. Just six pussies. Six authors in search of a bit of character, tweeted Rushdie. Although Carey and Ondaatje were friends, they had got this issue ter horribly wrong, Rushdie said. If Penn, as a free speech organization, can't defend and celebrate people who have been murdered for drawing pictures, then frankly the organization is not worth the name. What I would say to both Peter and Michael and the others is, I hope nobody ever comes after them. Fantastic quote. T t yeah. They're a fucking free speech organization saying, this is a free speech issue, they deserve recognition. What more is there to say? The authors have made themselves fellow travellers of a fanatical Islam which is highly organised, well funded, and which seeks to terrify us all, Muslims as well as non-Muslims, into a cowed silence, Rushdie claimed. Which is, you know, true. Based on the fact that he was threatened repeatedly, that a fatwa was declared against him, that there were calls for his murder, for his death, all over the place that there were rewards given out, that there were people encouraged again and again to kill him, that his books were burned, his books were banned. His free speech was censored. His life was threatened in the name of censoring his free speech because someone somewhere didn't like what he wrote. You cannot claim that this Islam does not exist. You cannot say Islam is a religion of peace, we're all lovely, because it's untrue. To suggest that that's the case is bollocks. The honour is due to be presented to Gerard Bayard, sorry, sorry, Bayard. Charlie Hebdo's editor-in-chief, and Jean-Baptiste Thoret, a staff member who arrived late for work on January the 7th and missed the attack. More than 60 leading writers are due to host the gala, celebrating artistic achievement and expression, but the award split the pen membership. In fact, uh, I believe it's three on three, but uh, I'll get to that later. Ms. Prose, which is a fantastic Everett writer, by the way, a former Penn American president said she, so sorry, said she was in favor of freedom of speech without limitations and that she deplored the January shootings, but added that giving an award signified admiration and respect for the magazine's content. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. All it does is say these people that we're giving an award to deserve this award. That's literally all it means. Although this is actually a strange thing I've noticed with uh, women as more than men. Um, don't know why. Not entirely certain. I'm going to have to try and look into it. Women seem to dig deeper into things than men do. Not um, as in like look for like, the symbolism and things, but that uh, in conversations, in spoken word, in written word, um, they tend to uh, speak with a deliberate subtext and tend to expect uh, the same in return, whereas men tend to be rather more direct. Uh, this could be due to the, uh, the differences in um, male and female brains, the fact that women are uh, more uh, emotionally intelligent and all the rest of that sort of thing, that it's based on um, recognition of people's uh, thoughts and feelings via, via movements and facial twitches and stuff. Um, but uh, because of this, I recommend saying I'm going to give you this award may just mean I think you deserve this award. That's what a bloke would think. A woman, on the other hand, may think I'm going to give you this award because I love you, or because I accidentally murdered your cat, or something else that they may draw from the situation in some way. And I think that's basically what she's doing here: is to say, I don't think this is okay because while I agree with everything in principle, in practice, 
I think that this one in particular, you, you, you're going too far because because I think something that there's there's no connection to. Next person, Ms. Kushner said she was withdrawing out of discomfort. Another woman with what she called the magazine's cultural intolerance and promotion of a forced, a kind of forced secular view. I know it's fucking horrible, isn't it? All those secularists just not believing in utter wank, just just th thinking stuff that makes sense, believing in things that exist as opposed to fairy tales. That's fucking horrible. How dare they? How dare we all not believe in things that are utterly fucking moronic and that are totally demonstrably false? <laughs> There's nothing forced about secularism. It's the default position. The atheistic position is not I do not believe that gods exist because I think they're stupid. It's gods don't exist. Then you say, I think this one exists. Well, right, good, you, you th keep thinking that. The default position is still, no, they don't. Because until you say, I think this exists, therefore it does, and we say, Haha, no, it doesn't. Until you actually provide some evidence, some even remote, tiny little bit of evidence, there's no reason for us to believe it. So when you say something like, how dare you have this view where there are no gods everywhere, where religions are not accurate, where bullshit alternative medicine doesn't work, we say, well, yeah, that's the kind of the default position. That's like saying, how dare you suggest that humans need air to breathe how dare you suggest that, that living things reproduce? How dare you suggest that we live on Earth and not Omega Prime? It's fucking retarded. At no point should anyone assume the position that there is something out there that we don't understand, that exists and that controls us in some way and that needs to be worshipped and all the other bollocks that comes with that. The secular view is the default one because it's the only one that actually makes fucking sense and requires no additional assumptions. Fucking idiot. Penn published a blog defending the award titled Rejecting the Assassin's Veto. The organization said it was sorry not to see those who have opted out of the gala, but we respect them for their convictions. Hmm. All right then. In a powerful defense of its position, Penn argued, we do not believe that any of us must endorse the content of Charlie Hebdo's cartoons in order to affirm the importance of the medium of satire, or to applaud their staff's bravery in holding fast to those values in the face of life and death threats. There is courage in refusing the very idea of forbidden statements, an urgent brilliance in saying what you have been told not to say in order to make it sayable. That's a fantastic fucking statement. Good on you, Penn. Know what the fuck they're talking about. Penn believes that Charlie Abdo's intent was not to ostracize nor insult Muslims, but rather to reject forcefully the efforts of a small minority of radical extremists to place broad categories of speech off limits, no matter the purpose, intent, or import of the expression. That I agree with slightly less, because I don't think it's it quite as small a minority as they believe, but uh, it's, the rest of it is true. This is what was going on. They did stand up against it. And they continued to, even after 12 of their members died. <laughs> they don't deserve the award, I don't know fucking who does. Others receiving awards at the gala include playwright Tom Stoppard, Azerbaijani journalist Khadija is my beloved, and Penguin Random House CEO Marcus Dole. The Ebdo boycott is the largest protest the Pan American Center has faced since Norman Mailer infuriated many writers when he invited the Republican Secretary of State George P. Schultz to address the na uh, annual Congress of the International Pen in 1986. And there's a little bit afterwards saying uh, the, the three people who are saying no and the three people who are saying yes. 
Peter Carey, Michael on Darche and Francine Prose all saying no. Well, Peter Carey is a Booker Prize winner from 1988 for Oscar and Lucinda and again in 2011 for True History of the Kelly Gang who has appeared on two Australian postage stamps in a series dedicated to Australian legends. Couldn't give a fuck. Michael Ondaatje, a Toronto-based writer who has shared the 1992 Booker Prize for The English Patient. His 2000 novel Anil's Ghost, set in Sri Lanka, tells the story of a young female anthropologist investigating war crimes for an international human rights group. Don't know why they felt the need to mention that. And Francine Prose, author of 20 Works of Fiction. Prose is a former president of Penn American Center and a member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. And for the yeses, we have Salman Rushdie, Maureen Freely, and Tom Stoppard. Salman Rushdie, satanic verses author and fatwa survivor, has no qualms over recognizing Charlie Hebdo. It is quite right that Penn should honor their sacrifice and condemn their murder without these disgusting butts. Good man. Maureen Freely, president of English Penn, author of Enlightenment, exploration of the persecution of writers in Turkey, and translator for novelist Orhan Pamuk, who was prosecu sorry, prosecuted for insulting Turkishness. And Tom Stoppard, playwright who examined persecution under communist regimes, will attend Penn Gala and receive special awards for artistic achievement and defense of creative expression from actress Gwen Close. All right, so there we go. People saying yes, people saying no, people saying it's good, people saying it's bad, people being geniuses or people being idiots. Um, I'd like to point out again, uh, Salman Rushdie, uh, it does here say fatwa survivor. And normally I disagree with using the term survivor for various things. Rape survivor, robbing survivor, and fucking burglary survivor, whatever. It always irritates me because there's never any actual genuine threat. There's never any actual potential loss of life. But a fatwa is a declaration of war against a particular thing or person. So in this instance, fatwa survivor actually makes sense. Um, so I'm totally accepting of it. The other article, which takes a little less time, um, is one I just noticed in, um, I found on Twitter, Richard Dawkins tweeted it, by uh, Douglas Murray, uh, it's just a blog post in The Spectator, I think, um, and it, it's in reference to um, Ed Miliband's latest um, debacle, I'm going to call it, uh, in which he stated uh, that he would make Islamophobia illegal. I was going to do a piece on it myself, but he summed it up very well. So I'm just going to read you what he's written. The title of it is, If Ed Miliband makes Islamophobia illegal, I volunteer to test the new law immediately. And Islamophobia is in little quotes. I am out of the country at the moment, and I see that Ed Miliband has used the opportunity to say, in an interview with the Muslim News, that he will outlaw Islamophobia if he becomes Prime Minister. I use say because Muslim News has never seemed to me an especially reputable outlet for news, Muslim or otherwise. And I say Islamophobia in scare quotes because, well, the term deserves them. There are many things to say about this, but allow me to con uh, sorry, but allow me to confine myself to three points. Number one, if Ed Miliband does become Prime Minister and chooses to make Islamophobia illegal, would he mind letting us know what he thinks Islamophobia is? After all, a phobia is an irrational fear. The Charlie Hebdo staff were called Islamophobes before and after two Islamists went into the magazine's office and shot most of them in the head. If there is such a thing as Islamophobia, and it is indeed an irrational fear, would Ed mind telling us whether or not it was rational or irrational of the Charlie Hebdo staff to be fearful of those elements of Islam? An answer before the 7th of May would be helpful. Number two, I cannot help noticing that some actual serious hate speech occurred while Labour was last in power, yet nothing seemed to have been done. Consider this speech by Michael Adebalo. Joe? Ed Ed Joe? I don't know. Yeah, at a Unite Against Fascism rally in 20, 2009. 29. What else was Ad doing here other than inciting anti non Muslim violence and prejudice? Of course, Michael, whatever the fuck, actually fo followed words with deeds and went on to behead drummer Lee Rigby. Where were the hate speech laws that day? And number three, finally. I hate to grandstand, but I suppose I should point out that if Ed Miliband were to become Prime Minister and were to decide to make what people might call Islamophobia illegal, then I'm very happy to test the law straight away. Indeed, I will immediately put on a gathering of academics, writers, Quranic scholars and philosophers, Muslim and non-Muslim, to discuss Islam. It is possible that some of those gathered may disagree with the foundational claims of Islam. I, for instance, may repeat my belief, not being a Muslim, that it is highly unlikely that the Quran was dictated by God. This is not only my belief. 
but is also the belief of Sikhs, Hindus, Jews, Christians, some Ablican priests accepted, atheists and ex-Muslims, to name only a few minority groups. And so the problem, Prime Minister Ed, will find is that A, what I am saying is true. B, the Islamophobia industry will continue to describe the truth as Islamophobia. C, Ed will have made Islamophobia illegal. Therefore, D, Ed will have made the truth illegal. This will be a problem, won't it? Anyhow, I must say that I'm not at all disheartened by the news from my homeland. Indeed, I now have a sneaking desire for Ed to become PM, and I'm rather looking forward to the results. This is an issue. Because what do you define as Islamophobia? Now, the term, of course, is, in, is entirely in existence to shame people and to curtail freedom of speech. It is there only to say, I do not like what you have said, so stop it or you go to prison. It is designed to prevent freedom of speech. That is the sole purpose of that word's existence. And if that word exists in such a way that anyone caught being described by that particular word will go to prison, I'm going to go to prison. Because to say that I oppose Islam in the same way that I say I oppose Christianity, in the same way I say I suppose I oppose Nazism and feminism, in the same way I oppose communism, in the same way I oppose fucking Buddhism, is to say I don't agree with it, I don't like it, I will oppose it. And if that becomes illegal, I'm going to prison. Because no matter what law there is, no matter how many millibands tell me that I'm not allowed to say I don't agree with something, no matter how many of them say that my disbelief or my ridicule of their moronic, utterly atrociously, tremendously ridiculous ideas, no matter that, no matter how much they say that what I say is wrong despite it being right I'm still gonna say it I'm still gonna say I think Islam is stupid I'm still gonna say I don't like Islam I'm still gonna say the Quran's fucking ridiculous I'm still gonna say Allah does not exist I'm still gonna say the Prophet Muhammad was a fucking child rapist because he fucking was and you can call me Islamophobic, you can say, you're an Islamophobe. And I'm going to say, yes, fucking terrified of Islam. Because it's Islam that wants me dead. Because it's Islam that's okay with me having my head removed from my shoulders to stop my tongue wagging. I'm not afraid of words. Muslims can go and talk all they like, I don't give a fuck. Muslims can say, I hate atheists, they can say, atheists are fucking idiots, they can say, of course there's a God. They can say what they want, doesn't bother me. Couldn't give a fuck. More power to them, I will fight and die for their right to say whatever they want. And I'm never going to kill them. I'm never going to find some Muslim and be like, you! Stop saying you believe in God or I'll kill you. Who the fuck would do that? But there are many, many Muslims who would more than happily kill me simply for not believing in their God. For saying I don't believe in their God. Freedom of speech is very important. I would suggest in fact that freedom of expression is of paramount importance, potentially even the most important thing. And so it's our job to protect it. Anywho, here's hoping Labour don't get in. Fuck off everyone, and of course Good luck.